What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, The Time Teller, and you might be able to tell we're doing something a little different this week. We're outside because uh, actually they're doing a bunch of construction here in the city as always, and uh, it's very, very loud. So I thought I'd take this review outside of the office. Um, unfortunately, you're still gonna be able to hear some of what's going on, uh, but at least we're not at the epicenter of uh, the construction, all the clanging and banging. So, okay. Welcome to another episode of Microbrand Monday. We're gonna be doing another review from a company I've actually never heard of until they wrote to me about joining us for Microbrand Monday. So uh, yeah, let's just get into this box. It is 11.31 AM, let's get down to business. All right guys, so um, we have this cardboard box. Now what's interesting is the outer box doesn't have any branding, but for some reason in pencil here, let me get up close and see if I can focus in. It says average. I don't know who wrote that in, but uh, anyway, let's open up this box. I already cut it and uh, we have a watch roll. Okay, let's take a look. All right, now guys, we already know that one of the most common themes when it comes to micro brand watches is the very prolific watch roll. I don't know what it is about micro brands and wanting to send their watches out in watch rolls, but it seems to be super duper common. I don't, I don't have anything against it. It's just, yeah, very common. And we have two different watches to choose from. Let's take a look. Now this is a logo, almost looks like a power sign, like for an electronic device. Uh-oh, we got some dive watches in the building or outside of the building, I suppose. Let's get up close, yeah. All right, so as we lay these pieces down side by side, we can see one is already ticking away, which tells me it's most likely an automatic because I haven't touched the crowns, I haven't touched anything. All I've done is moved the box, you know, to this new location and then taken these watches out of the watch roll. So that's a good sign. We do have an automatic watch to choose from. Um, there's a bunch of plastic on it and I know you guys are freaks and you love ooh, undressing the watches. Oh yeah, and some bubble wrap over there. Um, so it looks like we have like a slate dial going on here and then we have a white dial, a nice clean white dial over here. Pretty standard aesthetic when it comes to a dive watch. You know, we have a rotating timing bezel. We have some crown guards and a three o'clock crown and uh, looks to be stainless steel on a bracelet. Um, so what sets this apart from Another micro brand uh, dive watch, I don't know. Let's talk about the specifications, yeah? So here in my hands is the slate dial variant of the MMI turret 300 meter dive watch. That's right guys, so the first spec we can talk about is uh, the water resistance rating. This diver has a very competent 300 meter water resistance rating and uh, I believe Yes, indeed, a threaded crown. So we're gonna go ahead and see uh, the crown setting and function in a moment, but uh, let's go ahead and talk about all the materials used. Oh, we have a signed crown as well. Very, very nice. Okie dokie, guys. So the case is 316L surgical grade stainless steel, which obviously is pretty standard when we're talking about any stainless steel watch. Uh, let's see, it has a sapphire crystal three millimeters thick with multi-layer blue anti-reflective coating on the underside, which is something we like to see with truly functional sports watches, because again, when the AR coating is on the top side of the crystal, it doesn't matter if it's a sapphire crystal, uh, if you bump up against something, um, you know, that anti-reflective coating has a good chance of eventually just kind of scraping off. So having the AR coating uh, underneath the crystal, very, very functional and, you know, just an added detail that I really like to see. And finally, when we're talking about materials used, we can hone in on that 120 click unidirectional rotating bezel and check out that ion plated steel bezel insert. All right, guys, so they're really picking up the workload over there and you can probably hear it in my mic from time to time, so I apologize, but the show must go on. Okay, so I've mentioned that ion plated steel bezel insert and you know, when a watch comes in with a timing bezel, I really gotta scrutinize it because we've had some sloppy bezels in the past. And I don't know about you, but when I have a watch 
with a bezel, with a timing uh, marker or, you know, chronograph complication or just a G-Shock with a ton of different modes, I find myself using these timing instruments just because it's fun. You know, whether I'm in the kitchen cooking something or just messing around with something day to day, it's fun to use the timing bezel or again, uh, you know, chronograph or stopwatch mode or whatever you want to call it. So let's see how functional this timing bezel actually is. Definite ratcheting feel. You can probably hear it. No real back play to speak of. You got to yank on it to get any sort of back play at all. So that's very nice. The tolerances seem to be very tight. Alrighty, so if we were to line this up with the minute hand, we can see it's not going to back out on you. Uh, very, very nice. So the bezel itself incredibly functional, very nice, tight, ratcheting, positive feeling, uh, and I love to see that. Let's go ahead and talk about the crown setting and function. All right, so I've mentioned earlier in the episode when I was pulling on that crown, it's not budging, which means it's more than likely a threaded crown. So let's see how smooth or not this crown actually is to use. All right, unthreads very, very nicely, but I've spoken too soon in the past. I've had watches here that unthread like a dream, and then when you go to thread it back in, it's just a nightmare. So let's go ahead and thread this baby back in and see what it feels like. Oh yeah, <laughs> I just said thread this baby back in, and then I started thinking of baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, chilies, baby back ribs. Man, I haven't been to a Chili's in probably two decades. That's how old I am. Anyway, the crown feels great. Uh, no complaints there. And again, it is a signed crown. Now, uh, we can see the serrations on the crown, aggressive, but not uncomfortable. I've had some here that just absolutely chew like on the skin on your fingers, but this is, you know, it's aggressive enough that if your hands were wet, you wouldn't slip off, but uh, it's not so aggressive that it's uncomfortable. Same with the bezel. If I had one complaint, I actually wish uh, the serrations on the bezel were a bit more aggressive because you can see it's kind of a thin bezel and uh, there's not much to hold on to so I wish it was uh, a little bit thicker with two C's T-H-I-C-C -C. we want that baby thick but not too thick Speaking of thick, look at this case. Oh boy, we're gonna have to measure this bad boy. Okay, so we've tested the bezel, we've tested the crown threading, but what about the setting? So let's unthread this once again. And uh, let's pull the crown out. Wait a minute, it clicked and nothing's going on. Let me click it again. Okay, so there are two crown settings, but there's no real complication to speak of other than, you know, the uh, hacking ability. Let's push the crown back in. And uh, yep, it, hands it hand winds, excuse me, because I can feel the resistance. So, all jokes aside, guys, I'm just messing with you. Uh, this is one of the uh, dastardly ghosted date dials. Okay, so what I mean by that, and every time I bring this up, um, everyone just complains in the comment section because they don't like spending money on a watch that is withholding a complication from you. And I understand the frustration. Now, not to defend the watchmakers, but I kind of understand that not every design calls for a date complication. Uh, so it's different strokes for different folks, but I also understand the frustration that you're paying for a watch. The movement uh, provides a complication, but the dial uh, does not accommodate that complication. So what I'm talking about is this watch is powered by the very prolific Seiko Instruments NH35 automatic movement. We've seen this movement a million times, especially when we're looking at the micro brands. Uh, you know, it's um, very, very accurate, and it's also pretty much a workhorse movement, which means it's uh, very reliable, tough, robust, and again, we've seen it in a lot of watches. So we can rely on this movement from an accuracy standpoint. Um, the watch does have hacking and hand wind, and it does have a date complication. This watch does not pro does not accommodate that date complication, of course, because you cannot see it on the dial, and that's going to irk some people. Um, let's go ahead and thread the crown back in. So, yeah, the crown feels good. The setting feels fine. Again, there's not much to set other than the time because the date complication does not exist on this one. But what if there was one that did accommodate for the date? Hmm. Accommodate. 
Oh man, I'm on a roll today. Chilies, baby back ribs. All right, in comes the MMI turret 300 meter diver date. That's right, and we can see the date complication has a very interesting presentation on the dial. And uh, so for those of you who do not like the dastardly ghost date, we can actually get a date right up front surrounding the dial. How crazy is that? Not something you see from most micro brand watches and definitely not something you see from most dive watches. So let's go ahead and see the crown setting and function with this one. Because again, the specifications are the exact same. This uses a Seiko NH35 automatic movement as well. But again, the date has been accommodated on the dial. Let's go ahead and uh, change that date, yeah? Alrighty, so after just holding this watch for a moment and putting it down, picking it back up, that NH35 automatic uh, has come alive. Let's go ahead, unthread it. Click it into the first position. And pay attention to this date dial. Oh man, how cool is that? Let's get up close and take a look at that in real time. That is nuts. All right, we can see it is at the 9th, the 10th, 11th, 12th. This is crazy cool. Wow. I love it, guys. I don't know how you feel about this. It's definitely not as visible as like a big date window but this is much more interesting and much more unique of a presentation. I love it. Okay guys, so I've mentioned uh, that both of these have the Seiko Instruments NH35 automatic. Of course, this one has the date complication and the slate dial uh, does not. It is a ghost date. Now, some of you guys really don't like the Seiko NH35 automatic and that's perfectly fine. They do have the option to choose a Swiss Salida SW200 movement, and uh, I'm actually very, very partial to those. Now, there will be a difference when it comes to pricing, because of course, the Salida is much more expensive to source than the Japanese Seiko Instruments NH35, but we're gonna talk about the pricing at the end of the episode. There's still a few more things we gotta do. Let's go ahead and measure the dang thing. All right, guys, and as we all know, it would not be a micro brand Monday review without measuring the dang thing so let's break out the digital calipers and take a look all right so excluding the crown or those little crown guards we're gonna try to pick the widest point of the case and uh, right about 40 millimeters 40.1 millimeters uh, and then lug to lug 47.2 millimeter lug to lug then this looks like a little bit of a thick boy right here. 13.3 uh, millimeters, that ain't bad. All right guys, so uh, measurements, you know, below 50 millimeter lug to lug, 40 millimeter diameter, uh, that's within the sweet spot in my opinion as far as diameter goes and I always love to see a sub 50 millimeter lug to lug because then we know it's not gonna be taking up an enormous amount of real estate on the wrist, uh, but we won't really know until we put it on the dang wrist, so let's do that. Okay, so after measuring it, it's not ginormous on paper, uh, but again, on paper doesn't really matter. We have to put it on the wrist, but with the case diameter coming in right around 40 millimeters, that is well within my kind of sweet spot. I know everyone has a different sweet spot, but for reference, I have a seven and a half inch wrist and I think 40 millimeters is like right there, man. It is perfect. Um, now, when we're talking about vintage watches, um, I tend to go you know, lower than that or smaller than that, I should say, but uh, with a 47 millimeter right about lug to lug, uh, you know, that's under 50 millimeters. So that's not an enormous amount of real estate taken up on your wrist. And then, of course, it is a bit thick coming in around 13 millimeters, but that's, you know, all well and good. And we're talking about an automatic diver with a 300 meter water resistance rating. Now we're going to put it on the wrist, but there's something I feel back here that I want to talk about. Let's take a look. All right, so here's the clasp. We can see the clasp stay or the clasp lock, whatever you want to call it, uh, is engraved with that MMI logo. Pretty standard clasp there. You can see the engraving back there has that logo and then bordering that engraving, it says NH35 Sapphire 316L stainless steel. 
This says one out of 300. So again, this is a, I suppose, limited edition, although it doesn't say it on the case back. Um, TR3DV. So I think that's turret. Um, and then 300 meter water resistance. Now, what I wanted to take a look at though, is you can see if you don't like having this watch on the bracelet, um, the lugs aren't drilled on the case. However, this bracelet does have quick release spring bars. So you don't have to mess with a spring bar tool on this watch. You can just use your fingertips and remove that bracelet. How cool is that? So again, very, very simple, effortless. I love to see that added detail. And it just shows uh, that MMI really, you know, understands the watch collector. They understand that you're not going to always want to wear this on its bracelet. You might want to wear this on a silicone strap or on a sailcloth, stra sailcloth strap, excuse me. Um, or maybe even, oh my gosh, dare I say it? putting a diver on a leather strap. Oh my God. This video has been cursed. But okay, all jokes aside, I did put the slate dial on my seven and a half inch wrist for reference. And uh, the bracelet does feel pretty good. It's not a hair pincher. It kind of is mimicking like an oyster bracelet design. Um, feels pretty standard. And uh, yeah, the clasp feels good and sturdy. No real complaints. Uh, one thing I do want to bring up is uh, the end links feel nice and tight up against the case. It's not rattling. The tolerances look good on both watches, which, which is something I'm honestly a stickler about because we're not talking like vintage Rolex here or vintage sports watch that sometimes are rattling after decades and decades of wear. Sometimes we get micro brand watches uh, or even watches from big companies uh, that just are rattles, you know, they, they're just rattlers. And, and I don't know why that is. They don't take the time to match the end link tolerances up to the case and it's just very annoying. So it's very nice to see a smaller company like MMI take that into account and give us proper tolerances when it comes to the bracelet and case pairing. Love it. All right, guys, and you know, it is time for pretty much my favorite part, the loom shot. And we can see it's actually already glowing and I haven't really burned it with the flashlight yet. So let's go ahead and do that and give it some juice. And uh, then we will see. All right, it glows pretty dang well, guys. It, I, again, it's almost not fair to compare it to Seiko's Luma Bright Loom, but the Super Luminova looks pretty dang good. Um, we can see it's not as vibrant, doesn't last as long as your everyday Seiko, but uh, I do like the added detail of putting some loom on that bezel insert. So if you were to use this as a timing device in a low light situation, you know, you'd actually be able to see that bezel somewhat. Again, it is kind of forcing me to keep charging it with the flashlight though, because uh, it isn't the brightest or most vibrant, but it's definitely not the worst. We've seen some pretty bad loom on Microbrand Monday. So uh, this turret has some pretty good loom here. All right. So I obviously do want to take a moment and talk about what you're going to be looking at on the dial of this watch. And uh, we got to take into account the logo as it gets consumed by that minute hand. Now we can see there is some definite contrast here. The indexes are applied, look very sharp, straight and true. And the slate variant from what I can see, pristine. Can't see any debris or lint or anything on the dial that's not supposed to be there. So from my, from what I can see here today, that's all well and good. Now we can see that MMI logo, uh, again, it's partially obscured from the minute hand, but we'll take a look at the white dial variant as well. It, it is not applied, okay? So it's just printed on the dial. I actually kind of like that with this watch. It's not too much on the dial and literally the only other text is kind of that little pop, that splash of orange uh, right below the spindle, right above the six, the six o'clock, excuse me, where it says turret, and then uh, it has the water resistance rating, 300 meter or 1000 feet. So some people would probably prefer uh, to have an applied logo. And to be perfectly honest with most watches, I like that added depth, that added detail of a applied logo. But for some reason with this watch, I think, you know, they pull it off very, very nicely. Now let's take a look at the white dial. All right, so here is the white dial date variant. And I can tell you right now, without a doubt, this is the one to go with. 
Okay, so that slate dial, the non-date, there's nothing off-putting about it. There's nothing that, you know, calls out to me like, oh, this is terrible, ugly, but that's also my issue. Nothing about the non-date variant calls out to me. Whereas this date presentation is so unique, it's so dynamic, you don't really see it very often. And something about that white dial, we, it, it really contrasts very nicely with the indexes in the handset. You know, it's not a dark handset, but even in this natural light here outside of the office, we can really see uh, the finishing on that handset. We can see the brushed finishing. It is very, very nice to look at. Again, very clean dial and just that added depth and dynamic. I love to see step cuts and uh, applied indexes. And again, the logo on this one isn't applied, but the contrast is just that much better. Nice tasteful splash of orange with the turret and uh, man, that date complication. It's very dynamic, not too busy and something you really don't see every day. So this dial or, or this date dial I prefer it much more to the no date, uh, but I'd love to hear what you guys think. And again, the handset, the, the brush texturing, let's, let's hone in on that. Man, that looks nice, huh? Take a look at that. We can see on the minute hand, some really nice grained texturing from the finishing process there. Uh, and we can see as the second hand kind of moves into the light, we can see more of those brushed grains. I just love, I love to see these smaller watchmakers really take the time to do it right. And uh, it's very, very frustrating because it puts it in perspective that some of the larger manufacturers really don't take the time to do that. So big, big props to MMI and their turret date because I think they did an amazing job with this presentation. Overall clean dial, can't really see any debris. And again, when we look at this handset and really scrutinize it, we can't see any nicks or uh, tool marks. Um, very well done. And we can see here as we hone in on the date, of course, I'd be remiss if I kind of gushed over this date complication presentation and I didn't close in on it. Um, we can just see it, it's, it's not too much. You know, it's something different without being too busy on the dial. And uh, as we can see that nine o'clock index, that brushed grained texturing, um, it's all just very nice to look at in my opinion. So not often do we see a Microbrand Monday sports watch diver that also has some really refined finishing. Um, Usually they're kind of rough and tumble and then oftentimes, unfortunately, we can see they're kind of rough around the edges as well when it comes to the finishing process. But MMI did a very nice job with this one specifically. Again, this white dial date, uh, my favorite for sure. All right, guys, so we spent some time with the MMI turret 300 meter diver and now comes the time to kind of weigh the specs up against the price. And of course, I will tell you what I think. So. There is a date complication and a no date variant. Um, however, the biggest change comes with the movement chosen. So if you choose the Seiko NH35 automatic, you're gonna be paying right around 399, so just under 400 US dollars. And that's for their Kickstarter early bird price. And that's the information that I have here. Now, if you want that Swiss Salida automatic, their Kickstarter price is just under 600 bucks, so it's 599 US. Now, is it worth it to pay more for the Swiss Salida? Well, here's what I will tell you. If I'm gonna be paying uh, right around 400 bucks for the Seiko, I would rather bump, <laughs> bump it up and pay a little bit extra for the Swiss Salida, okay? And again, I would, I would pay a bit more just to get that date complication, it is just, so unique when we're looking at these two variants, the date is the one to go with. But again, this slate dial, very, very clean. And uh, yeah, I know, I know that that ghost date is gonna irk some of you guys, but I would love to hear what you think. What do you think of the pricing? What do you think of the different variants as far as date and no date? And do you share um, my opinion that again, that date presentation is dynamic without overdoing it?
Uh, but leave me that comment. I would love to hear from you. And thank you guys for hanging out with me on this new installment of Microbrand Monday. Thank you to MMI for sponsoring this episode and sending me these products to review. We will go ahead, package these watches up and send them back out so another reviewer can take a look. Uh, information about this company and these watches will be in a link in the description below if you want to check those out. And uh, yeah, guys, we, we can't do these episodes without uh, the watchmaker sending us these watches and supporting us. So we thank you. Um, I thank you guys for checking out these installments of Micro Brand Monday because again, they've been wildly popular and uh, I'm just so blessed about that. Thank you to my channel members for making it possible for me to uh, film every day of the week. Uh, so shout out to you guys. You guys freaking rock. Click the join button next to the subscribe button if you want to join the channel and become a certified T3 bot. Check out the affiliate links in the description below. Kind of the one-stop shop for the watch collector. It'll take you to my Amazon affiliate store. Check out my personal website, www.thetimetellershop.com. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman, The Time Teller, and always remember, I didn't invent time, I just tell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah.